T-Rex, the undisputed king of the dinosaur world. But all that may be about to change. For decades, a team of scientists has suspected T-Rex may have had competition. Hidden in his shadow, a smaller, faster pack-hunting killer they call Nano Tyrannus. But evidence is scarce and controversial. The long and the short of it is, we need more specimens. More specimens, more specimens, more specimens. But now, a new find. This is a game changer. It's a significant discovery. Two dinosaurs locked in a fight to the death. This looks like a double homicide. And one of the dinosaurs could be the mysterious Nano Tyrannus. It's a very fascinating animal. It's this enigma. Join us as we go inside the secretive investigation and piece together a trail of forgotten clues that could unmask the identity of a new killer dino. Hell Creek, summer 2006. A rancher's made a startling discovery. Trapped in stone, a massive cache of bones comes to the surface. Piece by piece, they unearth the skeletons of two prehistoric giants. But they're in for a grisly surprise. At every turn, they uncover signs of violence, a fight to the death. The tangle of bones is so large, the team must break the massive 40-ton fossils into pieces to move them. Yeah, there it is, okay. Found on private land and then locked away in a warehouse, access to the controversial fossil is only granted to a select few scientists. And the only cameras permitted are in the hands of the owners themselves. But to understand what it all means, an expert is called in to conduct a virtual autopsy on the 67 million year old bones. I heard about them the summer they were first discovered. Bob Backer the godfather of modern paleontology. I had been told ahead of time there was evidence that the carnivore and the horned dinosaur had killed each other. I did not believe that. You never believe that. That's, no, no, that never happens. If you find teeth of a carnivore next to an herbivore, uh, those were shit carnivore teeth. Maybe from animals that scavenged the dead herbivore. But almost immediately, the case of the deathmatch fossil is different than anything he's seen before. I go there, I see these broken teeth. You can find the broken crowns embedded in the neck region of the horn dinosaur. Here's the centrum, yeah. it goes right here. Okay. And right there is the tooth. It really did look like you had animals that killed each other. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a break. He begins his investigation by examining the victim. Four tons, five tons, 10,000 pounds. Yeah. The horned dinosaur was ginormous, biggest one I've ever seen. It had perfect front feet, perfect back feet. This is fabulous. A massive plant eating triceratops. the size of an African elephant, 10 tons of muscle and bone, an armored skull with enormous horns. This is not a creature you want to mess with. 
This is a scary hard target. The body is extremely compact. The hind legs are very strong and bent at the knees, which means it's getting some vertical component. It's got some three-dimensionality. This animal could turn on a dime. This is a maneuverable tank, very heavily armed in the front. These long horns that would come out to about out to there, continuously growing. This is arguably one of the most dangerous land herbivores ever to evolve. But who could bring down a full-grown Triceratops? There seems to be only one possible killer. T-Rex, the king of the dinosaurs. Nine tons, a mouthful of 60 teeth the size of kitchen knives, jaws that can crush solid bone. This is the ultimate apex predator. Tyrannosaurus rex, the last members of their family to evolve, the largest by far, probably the strongest dinosaurian carnivores. One bite of these teeth, correctly positioned, could kill any other dinosaur. But there's a problem. As Bob turns his attention to the killer's skeleton, it's clear that this isn't the T-Rex he's expecting. The skull is just 70 centimeters long. The legs, less than half the size of a full-grown Tyrannosaurus. What is this? A baby T-Rex. Or something else. This thing would have behaved totally different from T-Rex. For Bob Backer, this deathmatch fossil is a smoking gun that could at last resolve a mystery that's been bothering him for decades. He believes that just before the dinosaurs went extinct, T-Rex wasn't the only apex predator around. To reveal this killer's identity, we must now re-examine a forgotten trail of clues that winds its way deep into museum basements across America. Paleontologist Pete Larson is a self-confessed T-Rex addict. He has collected and studied more of these monsters than anyone else. What makes these very special more strength, more power than any other known dinosaur. In fact, these guys can bite a leg bone of another T-Rex in half. Since its discovery just over 100 years ago, T-Rex has gripped the public's imagination. Today, it's the world's most famous dinosaur. But T-Rex is just the last in a long dynasty of flesh eaters, called Tyrannosaurs. Tyrannosaurs lived at the end of the age of dinosaurs. We see them starting at, at the early Cretaceous, but by the time we get to the late Cretaceous, they're a very, very specialized group. Over the course of 80 million years, they evolved from speedy, dog-sized ancestors getting larger, growing bigger heads and bigger teeth, until they culminated in double-decker bus-sized T-Rex, the pinnacle of Tyrannosaur evolution. They are actually one of the largest bipedal animals that ever lived on the face of the Earth. Scientists have long believed that T-Rex ruled alone. But could our obsession with this monstrous creature have blinded us to another ferocious species lurking in its shadow? Hi. 
For Bob Backer, the story starts way back in 1988. He's digging through old fossils at the Cleveland Museum when he comes across a strange skull dug up in the middle of World War II. Cleveland has a great museum, a great paleontology museum. Found in the same part of Montana as our deathmatch fossil, there's just a head without a body. I saw this in a glass case, and it was labeled early Gorgosaur. But to back her, the over 40-year-old label doesn't seem right. I had just studied Gorgosaurs up in Alberta, New York, and I thought, you know, this is different from a Gorgosaur in the way the back of the head is constructed and the way that teeth are, and the extreme um, pinching of the snout. It's got a very, very narrow muzzle, and the eyes certainly could focus both of them forward. And I said to myself, you know, this is something new. A misidentified fossil overlooked for decades. We named this Nano Tyrannus, the little Tyrannus. And then the shit hit the fan. But Bob's claim to have found a new species is ridiculed by many of his peers. The idea of a new, smaller predator in the age of T-Rex seemed impossible. Tyrannosaur expert Phil Curry supports Backer's argument that the Cleveland skull is a new kind of dinosaur. The big problem is, because we'd never found a baby Tyrannosaurus rex, people started thinking about Nanotyrannus as possibly a juvenile of Tyrannosaurus rex. We now have a whole range of polarized thinking on whether Nanotyrannus represents a baby Tyrannosaurus rex, whether it represents a different species of Tyrannosaurus, or whether it in fact represents a totally different genus from Tyrannosaurus rex. Most paleontologists are still polarized on their thinking about whether Nanotyrannus is valid or not. With only a skull and no body, the theory of Nanotyranno's existence isn't accepted by the scientific community. But the mysterious predator in our deathmatch fossil might be the piece of evidence Backer and Curry have been waiting for. Every clue that the team gleans from the bones could help to reshape our view of T Rex's kingdom. The find of a lifetime. Two dinosaurs locked in a death match. A massive triceratops defending itself against a killer that scientists are struggling to identify. Still partially hidden in the rock, the team is beginning to think it may be an unknown flesh eater that science has overlooked for decades. The strange find is forcing us to reevaluate mountains of old evidence. Could a new species be lurking among the skulls and skeletons we think we know? The strange disembodied head the team has identified in Cleveland is only the beginning. One hopes that what we're going to do is eventually find more specimens. There is one more specimen, of course, at the Burpee Museum now that fits this profile very nicely. That's the specimen called Jane. Jane, another intriguing pint-sized predator, is on display in a museum in Illinois. Found five years earlier in the exact same part of Montana as the deathmatch fossil, she's labeled as the only existing example of a complete juvenile T. rex. But is that what she really is? Like the deathmatch fossil, she's less than half the size of an adult T. rex. One of the reasons that Jane is very special is that she's kind of at the center of this debate, or she's been at the center of the debate for a while. Uh, and the debate is over a species of dinosaur, a controversial dinosaur called Nanotyrannus. 
and this argument has focused on a single skull that was collected in 1942 by the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And then when we found Jane in 2001 and excavated her in 2002, not only did we have a nearly complete skull, but over 50% of the body. So we had all this new data for uh, paleontologists to argue about. Phil Manning has traveled from the UK to examine Jane. Sometimes there is a specimen that you see that's brand new to science and you desperately want to work on it. He wants to test a theory that Jane may be yet another example of the possible new species identified in the deathmatch fossil. When we study the bones of dinosaurs, we can now deploy some of the most incredible 21st century science, which has never been deployed before in the field of vertebrate paleontology. Phil is deploying a system called a LIDAR scanner. The machine fires a laser beam at Jane's skeleton, taking thousands of tiny measurements of every single bone. It'll create a millimeter accurate digital copy of her seven meter long body. It allows us amazing insight, which tells us vast amounts of information on the animal as a living organism. The plan is that the new technology will be able to put flesh back on the bones and figure out her body type. Was she beefy like T-Rex? or thin and lean, like a modern cheetah. Next, the data from the LIDAR gets analyzed by Charlotte Brassy, an expert in biomechanics. So these are the LIDAR scans. We've taken seven scans all around the animal in the museum. Uh, and then on our computer program, we can then look at that relationship between volume and mass in modern animals and apply it to tyrannosaurs. Using data collected from hundreds of modern animals, the computer will now virtually reconstruct Jane's body. Body mass is actually really important for controlling a number of physiological properties. So, for example, how fast this animal might run, the kind of things that they could be predating upon uh, is a function of how much they weigh. The computer analysis gives an intriguing answer. Using this technique, we've estimated that the body mass of this particular tyrannosaur is somewhere between 600 kilo and 900 kilo. Uh, and if we compare that to uh, other tyrannosaurs, such as T-Rex, we get values somewhere between nine and six tons. With Jane, because we've reconstructed her as having quite a small body mass, we might expect her to be more agile than T-Rex, for example. Thin and agile, a nimble runner. It could mean that she's not a T-Rex at all, but a totally different species. Or it could mean that teenage T-Rexes were slim and scrawny and needed to pack on the pounds to plump up into beefy adults. To determine the answer, the scientists must work out her age. But how do you do that with an animal that's been dead for over 60 million years? The answer could be locked inside the bones of her fossilized skeleton. Holly Woodward Ballard is a histologist. She studies the microscopic structures in tissue and bone. Histology is the only real conclusive way you can get at the age of an animal and see whether or not it's an adult or if it's still growing. She takes one of Jane's precious leg bones and saws it in half. So what I did, I took a thin slice out of Jane's femur. And using a microscope, I can take a look at the internal bone structure of Jane. And taking a look at this, I can count the rings within her bone and figure out how old she was when she died. 
If the bones reveal that Jane is a full-grown adult, it means she's not a T-Rex, but a case of mistaken identity. And that Nano Tyrannus is real. With the mysterious predator from the Dino Deathmatch still encased in rock, Holly Woodward Ballard is examining the growth patterns of another suspect's leg bones. Was this animal a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex, or was it uh, something completely different? Just like the ring patterns in a tree trunk, the rings in bone tissue can reveal the creature's age and how fast they're developing. When an animal's older and slowing down, becoming more skeletally mature, these growth rings, which are deposited annually, get very closely spaced. Similar studies of adult T. rex bones suggest they can live for up to 30 years. But how old is Jane? By counting the growth rings, so here's one and there's another one, we've calculated that Jane is at least 11 years old. If she's a T. rex, it means Jane is relatively young, with plenty of time to grow up. The next key factor to determine is the speed at which she's growing. There's been some debate on whether or not Jane is an adult of a particular species of Tyrannosaur, Nanotyrannus, or if she is a juvenile of a Tyrannosaurus rex. And taking a look at the bone histology, it demonstrates to me that Jane is still growing. So whatever she is, she is not the adult form of the ultimate animal. A mystery remains. Was she going to become a nine-ton T-Rex over the next 20 years? Or was she just a year or two away from being an adult nano? What exactly she's growing into is difficult to determine because when she was found, she was missing key parts of her skeleton, including the brain case, both arms, and over 40% of the rest of her body. What bones we do have are almost exactly the same size as the predator in the deathmatch fossil. And unlike Jane, this one is almost entirely complete. This, in fact, is on the side. They give the creature a name. Bloody Mary. As Bob Backer and Pete Larson examine her body, they spot something strange. This is really weird. One of its most intriguing features are its nearly one meter long, highly developed arms. This is the um, outer shoulder. It's much better developed than T-Rex. The hyperextension facet here, again, very different from T-Rex. The most famous T-Rex is at the Field Museum in Chicago. At 12 meters, this behemoth called Sue is more than double the size of the predator from the deathmatch fossil. Yet her arms are shrimpy. Sue is the biggest Tyrannosaurus rex that has been collected to date. This is what the biggest T-Rex hand looks like. And when we compare it to Bloody Mary's hand, we see something really incredible. If we hold them side by side, hand to hand, you'll notice Bloody Mary's hand is like one and a half times to two times the size of Sue's. Each bone in that hand is bigger than Sue's. And the skull of Bloody Mary is only half the length of Sue's. Even with the rest of the body still encased in stone, the team investigating the deathmatch fossil believe it's a big clue that they may be onto a new species after all. Composite lunate carpal. This belongs to a different subfamily from T. rex, absolutely. With this new evidence, Phil Manning now returns to Illinois with a copy of the deathmatch arm. Wow. Lovely being up close to Jane. He wants to see if it could fit the incomplete skeleton of Jane. Most dinosaurs, when you go to a museum, aren't 100% complete. You have to fill in what's missing, otherwise you have these weird-looking gaps in your display, in your exhibit. Found without any arm bones, 
countless missing pieces were created based on the assumption that she had to be a juvenile T-Rex. But perhaps these assumptions were incorrect. The humorous, you know, I realize it's the right one that's real, but you've mirrored it. And, and it kind of, it, it is a good match for the, the size of the humerus on this guy. I mean, when you look at the lower arm as well, again, we've got, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a pretty close match, but it's, it's just this massive hand looks so out of place on such a gracile animal. If Jane's arms would look like this, you're gonna have a animal that has a wide grasping range, strong arms, big meat hooks. Jane would be able to do lots of damage with a forearm like this. With enormous talons, nearly twice the size of a full-grown T-Rex, these arms transform Jane into a totally different kind of killer. Certainly is suggestive, it certainly is interesting, but uh, I definitely need to see more. The long and the short of it is, we need more specimens. More specimens, more specimens, more specimens. With so few specimens available, the team must now return to the deathmatch fossil in search of the conclusive evidence. Like a body at a crime scene, the predator in the deathmatch fossil is full of clues. But this specimen is virtually complete. It may be missing one claw, but it goes all the way from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. We're gonna know what this animal's like. Skulls are rich in anatomical characteristics that experts can use to tell animals apart. But the deathmatch creature's head is heavily damaged. And one of its key features, the brain case, is still embedded deep in the rock. Jane's skull is also problematic. Jane has a nearly complete skull. However, some key elements are missing. Her brain case, for example, we could not find it. But there is a brain case in the Cleveland skull. The team investigating the existence of Nano Tyrannus returned to the Cleveland Museum and the skull that started it all back in 1988. This specimen matches numerous features on both the deathmatch skull and Jane. But most importantly, the brain cavity inside the Cleveland skull is spectacularly intact. For Phil Manning, the shape of the brain cavities could be critical in determining if these creatures are specimens of T. rex or a totally different species. At the University of Manchester in England, he loads laser scans of the insides of the Cleveland skull and a known adult T-Rex into a computer. All of these are connected, all of this, bar yeah. these, these little canals kind of float. It's where the bones come together, which would have surrounded the original brain of the animal. And it gives you the geometry, the shape of the, of the overall space where the brain would have once sat. And you can see where different nerves or major blood vessels come in and out of the brain. So it tells you an awful lot of information about an animal. Is it possible, though, to get them sort of roughly the same size? Because it would be interesting to be able to compare them both being exactly the same sort of geometry and size. But looking at the scans on a computer is not enough. Now he's going to turn the heads inside out. Using a 3D printer, he builds models of the brain case where the brains once sat when they were alive. The shape of the brain cavity of a creature that's been dead for over 60 million years. It's really cool having both brain cases of two animals that have caused much confusion in the last few years. T-Rex, we all know and love, and we can sort of work out its geometry for the first time in glorious 3D as a rapid prototype, comparing it with this animal which has had the real questionable identity. And when you look at the overall shape, the geometry of that space is quite different between these two individuals. 
this being the Cleveland skull and this being a skull of Tyrannosaurus rex. The position of the blood vessels and optic nerve attachments on the two brains do not match. These critical differences suggest that the brain cases likely do not belong to the same species. The case for the existence of another predator in T. rex's shadow is gaining momentum. But there's one more element the team needs to examine. And it could prove that instead of juvenile T. rex, the team have discovered a new species called Nano Tyrannus. In a basement bone depository in Texas, Pete Larson is comparing the jaws of the potential nano T skeletons with those of an adult T Rex. If we look at Jane, Jane has 17 tooth positions, including a very tiny tooth in the front. Um, T Rex has between 12 and 13 tooth positions, where this guy has and interestingly, 17 tooth positions for the lower jaw. In the upper jaw, we have a similar situation where T. rex has 11 or 12 tooth positions and Nano Tyrannus has 15. The number of teeth in T. rex adults and our potential Nano T. specimens do not match. That's a pretty major difference. You'd have to lose tooth positions and I quite frankly don't know any living animal that does that. Nano Tyrannus is becoming more real at every turn. But there is one final clue hidden in the deathmatch fossil that could break the case wide open. This animal is not a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. Nano Tyrannus lancensis is real. Nano Tyrannus lancensis lives. A cunning Nano Tyrannus stalks a 12 ton Triceratops. He must plan his attack on the heavily armed plant eater carefully. He'll have just one shot at making the kill. But then something goes terribly wrong. The calculated hunt turns into disaster. No trace of the suture acceptable base For the scientists investigating the 67 million year old death, the injuries written in the bone are telling a story. It's a little out of position. Deep in the neck of the triceratops, right there's the nanotooth. The broken tooth of its attacker. Because this is the way it was found in the field. And the skull of the predator. You know, why is it crushed like that? But these bones are broken, they're shattered. The side of the nano skull was crushed in, squashed, crushed. A terrible wound. It looked like it had been hit. The CSI evidence is quite convincing. A meat eater, a plant eater, teeth of the meat eater embedded in the neck of the plant eater, the meat eater with a squashed face, and you would say, this looks like a double homicide. But there's a fundamental problem with the story. It breaks one of the cardinal rules of the animal kingdom. Why would a small predator take on a heavily armored triceratops, one of the most dangerous vegetarians ever to walk the earth? Even today, hunting is a game of calculated risk. Predators conserve energy, and they do not take on prey they know they cannot kill with ease. A fight between mismatched opponents simply doesn't make sense. To go after a Triceratops on your own, you must be able to kill with a single blow. And the only known creature physically capable of that is T. rex. T. 
T-Rex is unique in the hugely powerful bite and the very thick teeth designed to crack through this armor. A bite force like no other in the history of life on Earth. T-Rex jaws are three times more powerful than those of a great white shark. The beauty of T-Rex and T-Rex alone of its family as these are armor crushing. But are the teeth of Nanotyrannus also in that category? T-Rex tooth on, on, on this hand, Nanotyrannus on this hand. And if we look at them in cross section, we'll see that a T-Rex tooth is very round and one is compressed. Nanotyrannus is compressed. Very peculiar difference between these two dinosaurs. This round cross section on Tyrannosaurus tooth compared to the, the, the flattened cross section or the compressed cross section of Nanotyrannus is important because they use their teeth in different ways. Nanotyrannus stripped the flesh off dinosaur bones. T-Rex ate dinosaur carcasses, including the bones. This was, these were bone crushing teeth. These were very strong teeth. If Nanotyrannus would have tried that, its teeth would have broken. The difference in the shape of the teeth is more than just another potential difference between T-Rex and Nanotyrannus. It's a clue that will force the team to rethink the way the death match played out. Predator and the Dino Deathmatch are about to reveal the story of its death. If they were designed to lacerate flesh and not kill with a single bite, this suggests that instead of hunting solo, Nanotyrannus operated as part of a pack. Backer is now finding evidence of this hypothesis in other Triceratops deaths. This particular specimen was collected by the Black Hills. There were over 30 shed teeth of Nanotyrannus. To have 30 teeth shed, you probably need 10, 15 individual Tyrannosaurs. This animal, this individual Triceratops, was a victim of a pack of Tyrannosaurs. It could mean that the world of T-Rex was far more complicated than previously thought. He had to compete against other apex predators for food. It seems strange. For nearly 100 years, we looked at the Hell Creek Formation and its fossils and thought there was only really one big top predator in T-Rex. It seemed almost starved of what should be a much more tiered ecology, which we just didn't see. When you look at an established ecosystem, you see not just one big predator stalking around, there's multiple tiers. You've got your brown bears, you've got your grizzlies, you've got an all number of species, including the wolf. And they all have their own role to play within that ecology. With new evidence pouring in, more paleontologists are starting to accept the theory that skeletons like Jane and the Deathmatch fossil are not juvenile T. rexes. At a university in Florida, Robert De Palma has pulled a skeleton previously labeled as a T. rex off the exhibit floor to rebuild it as a nano Tyrannus. 
This particular specimen was approximately 53% complete. Good set of legs, decent set of arms, and a smattering of the rest of the skeleton. Before the skeleton was discovered, there were only a handful of equivalent remains found, so that's why we had very little to go on when restoring it, and it's very important to use all the up-to-date data uh, in reconstructing this and revising reconstructions. So this is a better idea of what the arm would look like on this particular Nanotyrannus. When it's reconstructed like this, it'll be a much more accurate skeleton. Pete Larson and the team are now using everything they've learned to bring the nano they believe in back to life. That's about right. That's really good. Tell me, did you get my CGI restoration of the nanotranus? I did, and, and, and they look great, but there's a couple things that uh, I think we might want to change. Through the course of this investigation, we've looked at the morphology of the teeth. We've looked at how many tooth positions there are in the jaw. We've looked at the hands. By the way, the, the arms and hands, fantastic. You can really see the difference uh, between that and, and, and a, uh, what a juvenile T-Rex would look like. This animal is not a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. Nanotyrannus lancensis lives. The 67 million year old bones now get digital flesh to become a living, breathing creature once again. We would take an excursion back in time 66, 67 million years ago, you would see nanos. You would see them in groups moving with liveliness. Now, the full story of the deathmatch fossil is at last playing out. A gang of nanos lay siege to a panicked Triceratops. It fights back as best it can. A lethal blow kills off one of its attackers. But overwhelmed by the rest of the gang, there is no escape for the giant Triceratops. The bones of the dead will now travel through time. Become encased in layers of rock. Fossilize. Until 67 million years later, we bring them to the surface. <laughs> 